Let's bring in Gene Principe, a guy who looks really at home here in South Florida. Hello, Gino. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Rod, long time no see. It was nice to see you in person. Uh, I, I feel like one of your fans when I when I saw you last night at the game, I was like, he's taller in person than, than I expected. I've seen you before, but it's it's been a while, so it's nice to see you again. It's the Florida sunshine. We grow here, Gene. Hey, it's always yeah. nice to see you. I, I would have talked to you about a little more, but you came out of that tunnel and just, whoo, fans were all over you there before the game. I'm like, oh, man, I no thanks. God bless Gene for put, putting up with that. How did you, I assume you're in Carolina now. How did, aside from the games, how did you enjoy this little southern swing for the oil? Uh -huh. You know, uh, yeah, let's we'll, we'll split it in two. Personally, it, you know, getting to Florida, I remember back in 06 and the Oilers were in Anaheim playing um, the Ducks in the conference final and Craig McTavish, then coach, said, you know, there's just something about the sunshine and the palm trees that it just kind of, you release uh, as much tension sort of as possible and your, your nerves, you're just more relaxed. I, I, it just... I, I don't know if there's anything medically, uh, you know, the vitamin D doesn't hurt, but for sure, you know, Tampa was a bit rainy. We, the Oilers came out early. Uh, oftentimes now West Coast teams will, will fly out uh, not just the day before the game, but two days before the game. So then they have full day of practice and then play, which I did in Tampa. Tampa was a bit rainy. I started to get sunny before we left. And then uh, sunrise slash Miami was, you know, a beautiful couple of days. I mean, it's, you just go sit on the beach and you just listen to the waves and you people watch it. You you relax. I mean, listen, the weather in Edmonton has been fantastic. Double digits. It's, it's well, we couldn't ask for more than we've had, but there's something about this part of the world that uh, makes it special. Yeah, well, you've probably noticed you spent enough time here that there are very few angry people in Florida. <laughs> and uh, they, yeah. they just aren't. True. Everybody's point. happy here. I, I love it. Yeah. It's a fact. Unless, unless there are Oilers fans, and there were a lot of them at the game last night. One of them yeah. I live with, and I'm not sure if she's speaking yet. I'm like, are you yeah. mad at me? No, it's the Oilers again. And <laughs> your thoughts on the game? Do you want it? Can you? Do you want to? I, you know, Rod, I am, I am, you know, I, I, when you, like you've been around so many teams uh, over the, well, decades in, in our cases, and um, you certainly have a handle on it because you're, you're around them, but it, it doesn't mean you necessarily understand it better than uh, a fan who who watches on tv or goes to games i mean i am i'm left a bit puzzled and confused because i i know this is a really good team i know it and someone will say well have you checked the record lately and i'd say i have and the two don't compute like uh yes there have been goaltending challenges Yes, the defense hasn't been as strong, and I mean that from an entire club standpoint. And yes, Connor and Leon haven't put up the numbers that they have, and the power play isn't as historical as it was last year. So I'm naming all these things, but it, I'm, I'm confused that I'm naming all these things because it's just not the team that uh, everyone, including themselves, expected. And I, I think we continue to to sort of wait for them to not only get out of it, to blast out of it. And uh, they did win three in a row under two different coaches, but now it's two losses in a row. And, and listen, there's some really good teams out there. Beating Florida isn't easy for anybody. Uh, Tampa beat Boston last night, so that's that's the thing. Everybody's trying to win, so you just don't rattle off seven or eight game win streaks. So those can be a challenge, especially when you don't quite have the confidence you normally do that Edmonton has has had for well a few years now. Well, if they knew the answer, they'd have done it. And I think the yeah. fans don't realize the difference in the roles. You're the host. You're not the analyst. So I appreciate you answering that. But that isn't necessarily your job. But an interesting question has come in from Darren Ippolito. Oh, my. Sorry, I went to the doctor today, gave blood. <clears throat> Band-Aid keeps coming off. I'm sweating down here. Darren says, do the broadcasters and media feel the outside pressure from fans as much as the playoff, uh, players or more? Because... You're more visible and less sheltered as teams try to protect their players from the distractions. It's an interesting question. For sure. How would you answer that? Yeah, yeah, it, it is good perspective because, you know, we, we don't have an impact um, on the results. Yes, if it's 
two nothing. Uh, we don't say the S word. Uh, we for sure yeah. don't try and jinx anybody. Depending on on your beliefs uh, when it comes to that, I'm I'm kind of superstitious uh, from that standpoint. You know, last night uh, we told a little story how. Uh, the Oilers, uh, Connor McDavid, you know, just isn't having the season that we, we expected that he's, well, he's, you know, he's a phenomenal player, generational talent, and he's proven it every season. And the Oilers sent uh, their video coach to, to send him some video of his goals last year. And lo and behold, he picks up a couple of goals. So I thought that was a neat story. As you know, Rod, sometimes stories, well, life is all about timing. And the timing of that was good. But then in the end, uh, the result wasn't good. And so Connor, Connor wears it. I mean, he doesn't wear it on his sleeve. He wears it on his face when, when things aren't going well uh, for the team. And yes, we are more accessible. Um, I go to the grocery store. I go get I go get gas. I, I coach my daughter's soccer team. Uh, people want to talk about the Oilers, and I love it. Uh, just like you when you've you know worked for the Pats um, uh, and, and the Riders. I mean, that's that, that, and that's great. That's part of our job, really. Uh, I just don't have the answers that they're looking for, uh, but the questions continue to, to come in because we are accessible and we are seen no helmet no visor uh, seen for two and a half hours uh, three sometimes four nights a week so i mean bring it on uh people are are caring about it like they're worried right they're curious they want the team to oh. be better they don't they don't come at you like a sledgehammer um so we we try and answer what we can uh, courtesy of what what we know well, like I say, last night, before the game even started, you just got mobbed by people. I'm like, can we pull that canopy out for Gene? You have it for the teams, but can we pull it out for Gene? Um, and then in Saskatchewan, oh, my God, I, yeah, I, I've lived it. Now, having said yeah, all that, sure. I, a fun one here, a fun one here. People see what they see on TV, and they think Connor is that, and I don't think that. Maybe you're a complete jerk off the air, Gene. Maybe you are. I don't know. The reason <laughs> I bring this up, Mark Spector, I spent more time with Mark Spector last night than I ever have. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. what, a, what a great guy. Oh my, He wanted to know everything yeah. about me and this show and yeah. Florida. And I'm like, what a great guy. 24 hour, 12 hours later, he's embroiled in this Twitter <laughs> horrible thing and i'm like ah oh, the point now i'm on mark's side because I, I got to know him like he didn't do anything sure. wrong you know? you know rod i think that's one of the things and you know from your time around athletes and people you end up uh, listen i grew up an oilers fan so uh, uh, yeah i'm an oilers fan and and i i work at not showing that on tv and with time it becomes easier because you pull for people, right? You know, Carter Verhage had such a great quote after his 100th goal, uh, which he scored his 101st last night, former Lightning, for a current Panther. And he just, you know, he talked about being in the ECHL and it took him six years and two trades to get to the NHL. So you start cheering for for people. And, and we all have our favorite teams. I mean, that, that that doesn't go away. It doesn't, you don't you don't put it in a garbage can and leave it behind in a hotel room. And, and Mark, I've known Mark almost 40 years uh, to be honest with you back in the university of alberta days uh, cgsr radio station there we used to do sports updates both of us trying to trying to make it in the media world and yeah i, I we arrived in carolina and i saw the the back and forth with tim peel a former nhl referee who i've always had good dealings with you know tim was always a really engaging guy to to chat with and uh, uh but you know if you if you didn't see or hadn't heard tim uh, posted on twitter a conversation a text conversation between the two and last i checked i think it had 1.4 million uh, likes um so you know i called mark this morning to see because he's he's arriving in carolina later and i just called hey buddy how are you you know and he said okay you know it's been a tough stretch for him and uh there's lots of things you think about you think about uh, your family you think about your job you think about your reputation and uh mark was in a better place when i talked to him about an hour ago than he would have been about six hours ago or five hours ago when it all sort of broke overnight so it is tough and you know lessons learned all the time about once you uh, send somebody something uh, you lose control of it 
and you don't know what's going to happen with it. Not that I haven't, you know, we text people all the time. Uh, and I've often seen stories on Twitter, happy stories, right? That people have texted back and forth and, oh, shucks, isn't that cute? Or how beautiful, big heart. Uh, I think this is about the first time I've seen something like this in our sports world, Rod. So uh, it, was a, it was a bit shocking and uh, curious to see uh, the fallout re reaction uh, response from people about what occurred. Everybody will have their own perspective, but please tell Mark from us, he's got two new fans in Rod and Serena, and he didn't do anything wrong. So, Gene, thanks for the time. I know you're busy. Uh, always enjoy your work, man. Thanks for the time and being you. Yeah, no problem, Rod. Anytime, say hello to Serena. I love the uh, Oilers uh, jacket and uh, love the fact that, yeah, you know, you, you can take the Oilers fan out of oil country, but, uh, you know, you can never take the Oilers out of them. So I uh, need to see the support uh, all over for Edmonton. Thank you, sir. The great Gene Prince Take care, buddy. from Rogers Sportsnet Oilers coverage. What a great job. What a great guy.